Happy Sabbath, saints of God. Truly, God has been good. He has been marvelous. He has been awesome. He has been such a fantastic God. And to him we give all of the praise, the honor, and the glory because he is truly worthy of all of our praise. So we just honor him on this, his holy Sabbath day. Our scripture of the morning is taken from the 27th division of the psalm. Psalm 27. And we are reading from the New International Version. Psalm 27, and we're reading from the New International Version. And it reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me, to devour me. It is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will hide me in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. May the Lord richly bless the reading of his holy word. At this time, let us seek the Lord in prayer. Our loving Father, we come before you this morning realizing our unworthiness. But we come with thanksgiving in our hearts thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for your mercies, thanking you for keeping us all through this week. Lord, we realize that it is nothing so good or so great that we have done, which is just cause for our being here this morning. But thou being a God of mercy, and a God of love. You have lengthened out the prickly threads of our lives and allowed our golden moments to just roll on just a little while longer. So Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your undying protection. Lord, we Thank you for watching over your congregation. Lord, we living in perilous times, but you have watched over your children. You've kept us in your care. You've delivered us from the wiles of the evil one. You watched over our children, watched over our loved ones. Lord, so we, we just want to say thank you this morning. Lord, we realize that there are many challenges that we face. We are still dealing with the pandemic. 
we are still dealing with prejudice. We are still dealing with unfairness. We are still dealing with trouble on our jobs, trouble at home, financial difficulties. But we know and we understand that you are God. And Lord, we know that with you, there is no problem too difficult that you cannot solve. So Lord, we call on you today, our problem solver, our burden bearer, our rock in a weary land and our shelter in the time of a storm. We are calling on you today, our way maker. Lord, we ask that you would take care of all of our problems. We come this morning laying all of our problems at your feet. And we know and we have confidence that you will solve them and that you are in complete control. Lord, be with the sick among us. Lord, those who have been sick for a while, those who are dealing with illnesses, those who are dealing with pain, Lord, we ask that you would allow your healing hand to attend to them. And Lord, we, we, we're looking forward to that day that we can again come into your congregation, come into your sanctuary, and Lord, we can give you together all of the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve. Oh, Lord, we know that there's going to be a little bit of shouting that day. Lord, we're gonna, we know that there are going to be some hallelujahs that day. People will be saying, thank you for bringing us through this pandemic. Thank you for bringing us back to the house of the Lord. Then, Lord, be with our pastor. Be with his family. Lord, uh, as he delivers your word, let him down in your storehouse. Give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding from on high. May the words that he speak be not his words, but words sent directly from your throne of grace. But Lord, most of all, we pray for holding our power. We pray for holding on power. We pray that you will continue to give us the faith that we need. Lord, help us to hold on and hold out. For we know that soon and very soon, we know it won't be long now, soon and very soon, Jesus, our King of Kings, Jesus, our Lord of Lords, Jesus, our rock, in a weary land and our shelter in the time of a storm, Jesus will be seen coming in the clouds of glory. Lord, help us all to so order our lives that when that day shall come, we, along with all of those who have been faithful, will be able to say, Lo, this is our Lord. We have long waited for him and he will surely save us. Bless us, keep us, but above all, save us in your eternal kingdom. These and all other blessings we ask in the worthy name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Ella Washington, as we just thank God for his incredible grace and his incredible mercy uh, that's new every single morning. Thank you for that prayer. It uplifted my soul uh, to remind me that my God is still in control. Somebody ought to say amen, that, that, that he has not left over control to anybody else but himself. And I just thank you that he is worthy and able. On today is a very uh, sad day for me. On today, I want to invite Dr. Kadia Felizor 
to join me on the on the stage here and elder and sister brantley are joining me uh as you know uh some of you most of you know who are members of the church for those of you who tune in uh from week to week dr felizor has been my uh administrative assistant for the last couple years and uh and uh i've i thank god for her dr felizor so many of you don't know uh that 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 she she's actually a doctor and uh, she, she, for the last few years, had been uh, wrestling uh, with God and wrestling with the board exam. And I thank God, I know a few months ago we celebrated that she was able to pass her exam. Somebody ought to say amen. She passed her exam and, uh, and she has recently gotten an assignment uh, 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 to, to, to begin her uh, journey of practicing medicine in the Philadelphia area. And uh, Dr. Felizor, we're just so excited and proud of you and thank God for you. Uh, she finally going to be able to go on and make some real money. Amen. <laughs> she ain't going to be making that church money no more. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm happy for her. One thing I will say uh, about Dr. Felizor is that she, in spite of the fact that she had all of this education in spite of the fact uh that that she wears a white coat in spite of the fact that 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 people call her doctor uh when she came to work she came in with professionalism uh she came in with a humility and i believe i believe kathea because of your humility god allowed you to be able to soar past and pass this test because that's what he wants and people who he has gifted much he keeps us humble and, uh, and 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 you you uh, you exemplified humility every single day. You did not look at the task as being an administrative assistant as beneath you. You took that seriously. And I'm, I'm a believer. When you do the best that you can do where you are, that's when God begins to elevate you to heights unimaginable. And I believe God has done that. I don't believe it's the beginning. I believe God is going to do more and more and more and more. I, I speak blessing over your life. I speak anointing over your life. I speak uh, health and wealth and relationships over your life. I believe God's going to open so many doors for you. And so I, I am just excited. And we wanted our church family, the Mount Pisgah church family, our head elder and his lovely wife wanted to just come today and honor you on this morning and thank you for a job well done. If we could pay you doctor money, we would keep you. But I know we can't afford it. <laughs> Amen. And so we just want to give you these flowers in just honor of your hard work and dedication on behalf of our church. We just wanted to give you this token of our appreciation uh, to put up some curtains in your new place and uh, let you know that we are thankful and grateful for you. And, and, and for the first year, you need to send your tithe check back to Mount Pisgah. Amen. Amen. Uh, at least at least pay us back for the blessings. <laughs> no, you're not paying us back. You're, you're, what you have done has been a blessing. And if you didn't do anything else, we are thankful and grateful for you. You want to say anything? Honestly, the first time that I stepped foot on campus, there was nothing but love, the warmth, the embrace, the family, you know, the, the prayer warriors of the church. I call, them, I call them my prayer mothers, Sister Lydia Brown, Sister Williams, Sister Mays. They've always checked up on me. They were encouraging me in the Lord. And I just, I'm grateful, Elder Brantley, everyone, like, just took me in as their very own and I just praise God for that and I know that my journey it was destined and this was a part of the of God's plan and I've learned a lot and I've grown spiritually and I praise the Lord I just ask that the church family that keep me in prayer you know the enemy is busy but greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world so I would just like to thank everyone all of my friends and my church family I thank you and I praise God for you all God bless you, Doc. We just want to pray for you right now. Ella Brantley, would you mind just whispering a prayer of, of anointing over her life and blessing over her life? Heavenly Father, today we are so grateful, first of all, God, for this phenomenal woman that you have loaned to us. We're so grateful, Father, for the ministry that she has given to this, your church. 
And Father, we are saddened today by the fact that she is going to be leaving us. But Father, we understand that this church is a movement. And no matter what vocation you may be in, it is a movement. And so Lord God, today we are asking that as Sister Kathia Hillithor takes her leave from the Mount Pisgah Seventh-day Adventist Church, we are asking God that your abiding presence will attend her. We pray, Father, that you will continually cover her under the precious blood-stained banner. We're asking God that you will protect her from all of the wiles of the devil. We're praying, Father, that you will anoint her daily with the infilling of your Holy Spirit so that as she comes in contact with individuals, that they will know that she indeed is a child of the Most High God. So, Father, we pray today that everything that her hand touches, whether it is a patient, whether it is, no, no matter what it is, God, we are asking that you will allow it to turn to gold. Thank you, Father, already for what you have done in her life. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in her life. And thank you, Father, that one day soon, you have told us that we're not to become weary in well-doing, but knowing that one day soon that we will reap if we faint not. So, Father, I'm asking that you will hold on to this child, continue to carry her in the hollow of your hand. And, Father, in that great day when you shall come, may Sister Philazor hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Father, this is the prayer that we pray for her. No matter where she goes and no matter what lies ahead, we pray that you will be with her. Thank you, God, for hearing. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name. bless you now we'll continue our services as we worship him in spirit and in truth amen amen good morning church family it is tithes and offering time here at the mount pisgah seven day adventist church and there's a scripture that I read this week in 1 John 3, verses 16 through 18 in the message version. It says this, this is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or sister in need and have the means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, what happens to God's love? It disappears and you made it disappear. My dear children, let us not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way that we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality, amen. And that was found in 1 John chapter 3 in the message version. You see, it's easy to say that we care about others. It's easy to say that we appreciate others. However, our words don't mean much if they aren't backed up by action. While none of us alone can erase poverty, each of us could do something to help someone in need. That might mean paying the difference if someone is short on cash if they are trying to pay for their groceries. It could look like helping someone with their resume if they are looking for work. Loving someone might mean bringing um, food or, or groceries for them when they're sick and unable to get out the house. You see, showing love doesn't have to be expensive or complicated, but it does mean that we involve some action behind it. And one tangible way in which you could show love this morning is by giving of your tithes and offerings. 
You see, each week we pull together our resources to further the gospel and to help the community. And I'm challenging you today to take a look, closer look around you and see how you can demonstrate the love of Christ to others. That might mean that you do something special for your children or your spouse. That may mean that you send a, a treat for your friend or just be present when they really need you. That might mean doing something special for your neighbor. Whatever it may be, just think about different ways in which you could show the love of Christ in a tangible way. I think we all can think of different ways that we could do better and be better about showing the love. So not, let us not show love just in words, but in deed as well. Let's work together to put action behind our words today. And this morning, you have several ways in which you could give. You could go to our church website. You could give via text. You could give via cash app. But no matter the method, what matters most is a heart that is postured towards God. Now let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning. First of all, God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for sending your only son to die for our sins. Thank you for loving us first, oh God. And Lord, as we continue to live this Christian life, help us, God, to be able to show love towards our brothers and sisters. Help us, God, not to just show it in word, but in action and in deed. So we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give this morning. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord God, and help us to live a life that is pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We give the name of Jesus honor. Hallelujah, we have already been giving him glory on this morning. Hallelujah, right where you are, just begin to clap your hands and bless the name of our God, for he is good. Happy Sabbath, amen. Hallelujah, it's a good day to give God glory. And do you agree? Hallelujah, it's always a good day to give God the glory and the honor. And we're going to lift him up even to four, hallelujah, on this morning in song pray that you would join in on today. Hallelujah. And we will be one big praise team. Hallelujah. Praise in the name of our God. We come to glorify you, Father. We're singing to an audience of one on today. Hallelujah. Our worship is intentional. Our worship, Lord God, hallelujah unto you, Father. Hallelujah is the desire of our heart. We want you to know. We want to articulate
This morning, right where you are, just say, open the eyes of my heart. For the same purpose but then God said who touched me somebody individually touched me what do you mean it's so many people here so, so many people could have touched you but it was one person that got God's attention would you allow your worship to grab the attention of the father on today before the word comes we don't know what God is going to speak through the man of God on today but father we need a touch from you we need a touch from you we need to hear from the heart of God on today come on and touch him back if you need a touch come on and touch him Touch him with your worship. Touch him with your words. Touch him on today. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The song says, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will see of the goodness of God.
been good. I don't have time to tell you all he's done, but just know he's been good. And, and you don't have time to tell, because I know if I give you the mic, you can tell us about the goodness of God, but we don't have time. The Lord is going to speak through the man of God, but just lift your hands right where you are and thank him for the, because if it had not been for his goodness, his goodness ain't predicated on what you've done. Nothing righteous about us. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. I told the Lord one day in prayer, I said, anything that I've done good, it's been you. If I ever fed the hungry, if I ever did something for someone, Kaylee, let me tell you something. It wasn't me. It was the goodness of God. Because it ain't nothing righteous in Ava. I'm righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Hey. We should never boast in any works that we've ever done. If we boast, it should be in the Lord. Amen. Yes. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails us in all our days. We've been held. From the moment that we wake up until we lay our heads, we will see of the goodness of God. Come on, one more time before we leave. Because all my life you have been faithful.
goodness and his grace in 2020 and in 2021 has been running after you. I don't know if some of you realize that, that, that the devil wanted to kill you in 2021 and in 2020. He, COVID was for you. It had your name on it. It was supposed to kill you, but, but because his goodness and because his mercy was chasing after you when the devil thought for evil, God turned it around for good. Worship him, Ava, worship him. singing and I, I laid in my bed and the Lord began to say intercede over Ava today he said because I'm going to use her to minister to some people today I'm not even going to preach no sermon Ava we're going to sing a few songs and we're going to worship him today I'm, I'm not preaching no sermon sometimes you got to throw away the book you got to you got to you got to you got to rip up the the, the, the schedule you got to rip up the, the plans and the programs because sometimes you've got to just sit in the presence of the most high God because in his presence is joy in his presence is healing in his presence God begins to change you from the inside out you don't even have to say nothing but his goodness and his mercy I'm going to pray over you and I'm going to let you just begin to minister and I'm going to speak while you're ministering so Father in the name of Jesus you've anointed Ava to be a minister and a psalmist and a minstrel for you oh God Father today I pray that you anoint her afresh from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet oh God Father the enemy has been trying to kill her for a while but I bind him in the name of Jesus. Just like I bind the enemy who's trying to kill some of you who's watching online. He's thought, he's thought that his attacks, he's thought that, that, that everything that he has conjured up against you, it would work. But today we declare and decree that it shall not have authority over our lives, that it will not work, oh God, that it will not come to pass, but because of his grace because of his mercy because of his anointing because we're just gonna sit in his presence for a little bit on today we're going to fight every every wicked thought every wicked every you know I'm just thinking in the Bible story you know Mordecai and Esther and all of them when their enemies conjured up a plan to destroy them they 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 built gallows that they that their plan said that we're going to build these because we're going to hang them on it yeah 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 because they thought that you know what we got a plan we're going to destroy them but little did they know ha <laughs> ha they had no clue that his goodness <laughs> was running after them. <laughs> His mercy was chasing them. I don't know about somebody today. Every now and again, God has to be my linebacker. And he, he, he knocks out my enemies. His goodness and His mercy and His grace been chasing you all week stop 
focusing on what the enemy can do and what the enemy has done and what the enemy is doing and what the enemy will do and what the enemy is trying to do and what they are putting together against you all you've got to do sometimes is to step back and say lord i'm in your hands lord i'm at your disposal lord use me in this place today today we're just gonna worship ava Hallelujah. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, that's what we're going to stay today. I hear today the song of my spirit. Keep, keep speaking. playing that. Oh, come on. Just continue to worship the Lord. Yes, worship in this. Your grace and mercy. should have killed you the divorce should have made you lose your mind Woo! when you couldn't feed your kids and you didn't know how you were gonna pay for your tuition it it should have had you made a nervous breakdown but somebody knows how grace and mercy can rock you to sleep in the midnight hour somebody can testify how grace and mercy can show up in a courtroom the judge says dismissed that's what God does for each and every one of us and that's why I gotta live my life in the light of his grace and in the light of his mercy because he's good to us he is good this other song comes to my mind it says at the cross 
moved into this worship experience and the spirit of the Lord has come down in your presence and come down in your home and come down wherever you are. I just want you to stay in his presence. Sometimes we are, we're rushing for a preacher to say something into our spirit when the Holy Spirit actually wants to talk to us. We're rushing to go to the next broadcast and the next cool virtual space when in reality God wants you to be in his space sometimes what we're missing is not a, another sermon sometimes what we're missing is circumcised ears sometimes what we're missing is silence sometimes what we're missing is to turn off the noise and to to shut off the phone and to put down the internet and social media and it's inundated us and sometimes God says really what I want with you is I just I want my time with you I want peace and quiet with you I want to I want to speak some things into your spirit that I'm about to perform and I'm about to do but I can't do them because I I can't get you quiet enough to hear me can't get you still enough to and, and, and here's what God has been putting in my spirit for so many of us we, we've got to have somebody singing and somebody preaching and somebody praying for us to feel like we're in the presence of God and God is saying I need you just to sit still and know that I'm still God without a praise team without a preacher with without a broadcast with out going to church and I can still get a word through to you and tell you because here's what I know about God he, he, the wind will come and he's not in it and the, and the wave will come and he's not in it and the crashing will come and he's not there either but he comes in the still small full voice to say this is me and here's what I'm about to perform but if your pace is too hectic and your life is too busy and your 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 space is so cluttered you can't get a word in edgewise so today 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 instead of tuning in to 12 broadcasts listening to eight sermons And the latest praise fest challenge you disconnect so that you can connect with God I challenge you spend at least an hour at least one hour Jesus said to the disciples could you not watch for me for one hour could you not watch so that you enter not into temptation, but because you couldn't even watch when temptation came in and just swooped you off your feet. I want to challenge everybody. Just turn everything off and get quiet and get in his presence for at least an hour today. And ask him, Lord, what have I been missing? What have you been wanting to say? And what are you doing in my life? And let me connect to your agenda. I want to pray for you today, Father God. I thank you, Lord. They didn't need another sermon today. They didn't need another hoop, three points in a poem. But what some people need more than anything else, and that is to literally hear from you literally get quiet enough in the room to get quiet enough on the porch to take a walk no headphones no music blaring just the spirit of the Lord speaking saying this is the way walk ye in it recover us from our bipolar when it comes to hearing your voice Recover us from our ADHD. 
recover us from our hyperactivity and wanting more and wanting more hype and wanting more 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 the preacher to do more uh, 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 grammatical tricks heal us from that God and guide us to the place where we just sit still and discern your voice again bless us to this end father we pray in Jesus name amen Surrender. Ah.